Seems like a long you. time, doesn't it? But it's only been four months. Maybe four months ago, like four months. I'm like, man. I thought you were partners like in the company by how much. Seems you like it. <laughs> seems like so, it. So stock. He's it should risking <laughs> risking his whole following of Peterbilt fans for yeah. these for these <laughs> ugly uh, uh, European trucks. So I'm like at home on the couch one night. I'm always every now and then like I'll get on Craigslist. Because mm. sometimes there's a deal on there that some old fogey has, like, posted something there because he doesn't know what Facebook is yet. Yeah, yeah. And it, Craigslist either is, like, crazy good deals or scams. He does it while driving his motorhome down I-75. <laughs> yeah. He's just posting on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I search semi-trucks, and then this ad comes across. It says, um, so I should have screenshot it. Maybe I did, but it was, like, super rare show truck or something. I'm like, what the heck is this? So I click on it says nothing about Scania. It just says super rare show truck. I click on it, and a picture of a Scania shows up. I'm like, no hmm. way. And it's in Daytona. So I'm like, and you've dealt with Craigslist before, right? Yeah. If there's not a phone number there, and it's just like the Craigslist email, they never get back to you. Yep. Like it's just gone with the wind. Yeah. So I all there was literally. So there was a Craigslist email. I hit him like, I'll, I'll buy this right now. This red Scania that I have, they wanted like eighteen or twenty thousand for it. I was like, for me, it was like the only one I've ever seen anywhere for sale in the country. Yeah. What was the thought process? Was it was instantly like, like people like, are gonna love this? I like jumped up. I was like, Amber, this my is the wife, new. you're not gonna understand what's happening right now. <laughs> this guy's not gonna mess me back. And I hit him up. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I had an email when I woke up. It like so sleep in till ten <laughs> at least. And I was like, hey, I was, he's like still have. It. I'm like, call me right now. He calls me like that. I was like, where is it at? I'll buy it right now. Mm -hmm. It's in Daytona. So I call Paul. He's got a plane. I was like, can you fly me to Daytona? Weather's terrible. Like, he calls <laughs> me. It's thunderstorm. And he's like, Paul, we can see the I need to get to Daytona. Like, we're like flying it's level with the clouds. A fall, like, like all the rainfall, we're like flying around them. Like we can see lightning off. Of we got to get this old, uh, this old uh, we gotta get this right now. It's not that far. You know? <laughs> no, like, it's not that far. Get me there right now because the owner was like, he's a carnival operator. And that's how it got here. He shipped it from Belgium. Like that and a few other European trucks, but so Scania like is like, Carney. yeah. Carney. So he was out and it was at this other Carney guy's house. And he it, wasn't from Gibsonton. He was from, <laughs> yeah. was he from overseas, the guy or not? Yeah, he's from yeah. Belgium. So it was at this other guy's place where he stored it or whatever. And he's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it back. I'm like, I don't care. I'm coming right now with the cash. Don't tell me anything else. So like Paul's, Paul's like, desirable. I don't know. Paul's probably like, wasn't another guy that wanted it Literally anything. probably nobody. Yeah, but to me, I'm you. like. Wheels are spinning, and Paul's like, we can go tomorrow. I'm like, we have to go right now. So we get in the flame. Let's risk our lives for this old <laughs> He drops Scania. me off, and he dips, and then I think, was it Ryan? What was my cameraman, Ryan? He's awesome, dude. And I'm like, I'm looking at it. It's like so surreal. Like, I've never been so excited about content in my life. And to this day, they still excite me so much. They and are unique they're looking. They're so and you. The technology cool. would blow your mind. Yeah, really. What they were doing in the '90s is what they're putting in trucks now. Well, Maybe you know. I wouldn't even say that. Like, like they have the technology in this '96 is still more advanced than what's in my new, so, brand new Peterbilts. Obviously, people that listen know I'm very ignorant on most <laughs> of this stuff because I don't know anything Other than about LS or Cadillac heavy equipment like that or like a you know. Like, what's so, what is so special about them? They're V8s, right? Not all of them, but the biggest thing to point out, and I use the word all the time, is they're engineered. American trucks are engineered to an extent, like, right? So, like, Peterbilt makes the cab and the chassis. That is it. Mm -hmm. Like, the engines are made by Cummins, Caterpillar, Detroit, whatever. The transmissions are made by someone else. The rear ends are made by someone else. Even the dry shafts. Yeah. Like, Peter Bill like builds that, parts box. and then they put all these parts together, and they're like, oh, we need to run an airline from the brake pedal to the back. Let's just run it, <laughs> and then zip tie it all up. Scania builds the cab. They build the frame. They build the engine. They build the transmission. They build the rear ends. They build the whole truck, so it's... Isn't Mac a little bit like that? Sorry to, like, ruin the new story. The new Macs, I think, are starting to be like that here, but they're now bought out by... Volvo. Volvo, yeah. Volvo. No, Volvo's pretty good, right? So, yeah. but even, like, the Euro American versions of, like, Volvo are still lacking European versions of Volvo I trucks. would imagine the European are kind of have to do that because, like, it's a small island country where they can't just 
like the U.S. can just kind of put all these pieces together. Yeah. They kind of have to make everything. To, wouldn't you think that would make the most sense, though? Because I look at how stuff's made, and it seems to come from everywhere. Like, you know, the airplanes, they make, even though the Boeing makes most of the stuff, mm -hmm. the fuselage is made in Kansas or somewhere. And it's it's on a train all, all the way out to, uh, you know, they're based out in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that doesn't make that much sense. Why not have a mega factory, yeah. you know, like the Tesla does or whatever? Yeah, gigafactory. Just build whatever, it yeah. all. That makes the most sense. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe well, it takes like a lot more to do it that way, I guess. By using train, they're so limited on how big they can build mm -hmm. something. Tunnels and railways. They have to build things specifically to fit on a train. Well, that's a lot of stuff. Like, if you, if you, you know, notice almost everything's made either to fit in a shipping container mm. or onto a truck. Everything's eight foot wide, you know. It's a lot of... I'm sure everything's kind of made to ship, you know. It's yeah, like NASA, the rockets that they use are specifically sized because they have to fit on a train. So, like, really, they could probably be better if they didn't have to fit on, on a, a train, train. <laughs> to ship to somewhere. Ship. Like, Where have they got to ship a rocket? That's from crazy. well, they have to go from because they take off at one spot, and land somewhere else, right? Well, they also they build them some of them in Texas. In that, uh, um, they have to go to Cape Coral to launch El, right? El pa whatever South El Padre Island, Texas is where they launch a bunch, mm -hmm. but then they also launch a bunch in Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. So they probably have to ship things and there's around. There's big aerospace, you know, pockets around like Huntsville, Alabama, I think, is big on aerospace, which, yeah. you know, I, just I guess whoever's working there, you know, I've met space, you know, what is it, rocket scientists basically from Huntsville, Alabama. Doesn't, doesn't add up to me, but there's, it's there's, actually even crazier too because like everything has to fit on a train and the train tracks are based <laughs> off of roman old <laughs> they're, uh, like they're literally like four feet wide or something like and that, that yeah. size is based off of then, like roman carriages yeah exactly. back in the day so like it's everything's it's based done. off of that it's, they don't want to restart over isn't <laughs> yeah, it? it's like the metric system it's like reinventing the wheel they yeah, don't want to they don't want to bring the metric system in which makes a lot of sense no but no it, base uh, 10 <laughs> <laughs> and then everything is everything is already made with you know standard stuff so I guess so we'll yeah, just keep it the Scania's I compare it to like opening the hood on a BMW people are like this looks way complicated I don't want to touch mm -hmm. something like this or in, like any European car for example and like a lot of my viewers are like these are like way too complicated Your American trucks are the only way to go what are and, they made in like Sweden right aren't you just there they're made in Sweden yeah I was just there um but like it's just engineered. It's like American trucks. Like something rubs. It has a problem. You know, you're going to be working on it. These trucks. You, there's a lot going on, but everything has its home. So there's not like lots of failure points because it's been designed to work perfectly with yeah. what it's made for, and they last a lot longer. I think. Well, that's completely stupid on them because you got to make things that fail, or else you won't make more money. Well, the, the thing about those trucks is they get used up there. Yeah. Because American trucks were only limited to 80,000 pounds. That's just the average truck. Mm -hmm. There, they run 60 metric tons, which is 62.2, like 100, 130, 140,000 pounds. Oh, shit. Everywhere. But there is people, like, obviously, to fact check it, there is people hauling heavier than 80,000 here. Some of the states, you'd haul them lumber at 120, and I've met yeah, guys but, that, with, but these are, like, box trailers, like your average so truck. So this is just your normal guy. Or heavy all yeah. the time. But that's also all they kind of have. Like, they don't just have, like, a 3,500, you know, No, they don't have pickups. I mean, like, they do have, like... It's, like, cars, and then... They, they use a lot of vans in Europe. They have medium Tons duty of stuff. Vans. You'll see vans everywhere, like your yeah. uh, Ford Transit, Mercedes Sprinters all over. They don't use trucks like we do in America. Yeah. But that also is so weird. I mean, it was like that when I was in Australia. Like, mm -hmm. people are towing what we would be like, you need a 3,500 dually <laughs> with to like tow that. like a sprinter van looking thing, yeah. Or with like a ute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's a unibody. <laughs> like, yeah, they're all unibody flatbeds yeah. everywhere. <laughs> like, you're towing like a full-size vehicle with that. <laughs> but that's what that's what they do a lot. And then yeah, they, they love Commodores. They, they love Commodores and stuff over there, don't yep. they? It's, but Australian mm -hmm. people are crazy as well. I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> they are. It's kind of just like Florida the west. there. <laughs> just a but giant a way Florida. bigger Florida. Yeah. Well, it's bigger, but the population's not that big. They only right. live right around the edge. Yeah. 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 Like, most of it's just nothing. Big giant <laughs> rock in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anything's out there besides a couple of coal mines. <laughs> really? <laughs> and a lot of meat. It's crazy. Yeah, the, so the Scania... I say it different every time. I just feel like it's so long to say Scania. 
That's probably fun, though. You should do that for this because <laughs> there will be a lot of comments correcting you. You should just do a live stream. People love to yeah, correct like people, don't they, on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. they love it. Yeah, this it. is a guy that's totally, like, social media dark, so not he's, like, a good outside not into it. outside voice. So I went out. Videos, obviously, I picked it up. Video did, like, 500,000 views, and which is really good for my channel because I was, like, averaging, yeah. like, 80 to 100,000. Paid for itself right there. Yeah, it's paid video. for itself yeah. pretty quick. And... Videos were doing great, doing great. Then I like started picking up crazy audiences from Europe, lots of European viewers. People like, have even showed like, up here, right? Yeah, it went from being like sixty percent USA audience to like forty percent, which is oh, wow. not the greatest thing for advertisers. No. But um, the audience changed, and then I like started beating on the truck like Bruce Wilson does, and like people got mad. Views went down a little bit. I was like, mm. well, they're new people. <laughs> But like that the, didn't realize what you do. Yeah, the so European, they didn't expect you to do what you normally do. The Bruce European is truck Bruce. scene is like, if you like look at a truck wrong, they get upset. Well, yeah, because there's finite number of them. Because so well, have to they're show just like there's a huge loyal fan base to Scania trucks. So then I ended up buying another one in Canada, and that's what made the views keep going even higher and higher. Cream puff, right? Yeah, for a year. So to have one here in the U.S. legally, they have to be at least 25 years old. Okay. Kind of like all the Crash other test rating stuff. import stuff. Um, stuff yeah. So the 25-year-old Scania's are pretty hard to find in really great shape because it's a 25-year-old semi mm -hmm. that's been used. It's not like importing like a JDM car or something. That's yeah, like been Japanese the, people whatever. keep their stuff perfect. Yeah. Too. It's a but also like a, a sports car. Yeah. You keep nice. Yeah. So I bought one in Canada tried doing the import process myself because I read some like stuff people importing cars from Canada and it's like mm -hmm. oh just have this paper filled out anything you think you know about importing you don't but Bruce also thought it was going to be a piece of cake and it, yeah. it never is let's so, be honest I show up to the border like come I wait like three hours just to get across the Detroit border into the line and the guy's like you want the bad news now or later I'm like now he's like you're going back to Canada I was like no. So the U.S. was making it hard? Yeah. Or was it? Canada know, doesn't Canada care. Canada was making it hard to leave. The U.S. is like, you're not bringing this in here. You don't have the right paperwork. It's in our Did system. you have any paperwork? Yeah, I had paperwork if it was a car. But it, yeah. it had to be. I didn't think they cared about the borders. It had. <laughs> right? That's a fact. So it had to be a certified import because it was still, even though I'm not using it commercially, it's a commercial vehicle because of the weight. Yeah. Kind of like the CDL thing. It's yeah. a commercial vehicle because of the weight. So I go back and I'm like get back to Canada, and they're like, well, why did the USA turn you around if you're an American citizen? And they're like, we may need to deport you back to the USA. And now they're like, if this what?" so I had to go sit in, like, an immigration office. You stuck it, in between. Yeah, I was, like, stuck in between. They're like, well, if you have to go back, you're going to have to get the truck towed away from here. I'm what like, state were you trying to drive into? Michigan. Michigan. And apparently the one I went through is, like, if you're trying to do anything other than hulk goods, it's like no go zone. Because I was gonna say you could have been like in you or like out in the west more. Yeah, or something. There's like a couple border crossings. If you're doing anything other than, if you're importing cars, literally anything that you no go zones, like they will give you the hardest time. And this was one of them. Hmm. The border crossing guy was super chill, but it was just it's just no go. So got a hold of this company and they got me all the right paperwork. Like the next morning, thank goodness. And I drove another three hours north into Canada, further north, and crossed at another border, like basically up there where side by side blog guys More are. Oh, like New York area? Or? No, it was like on the west side. So, yeah, like going into Michigan, oh, further west, north yeah. into the Michigan. Up into like that top side that's not yeah. part of the glove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, or the UP. You didn't go on the UP though, did you? Mm -mm. That's the top. That would have. Oh, know. yeah, that weird spot up and there. And I was like, I'm like, here's my paperwork. Please don't deny me. <laughs> like, let me in. And they're like, you're good to go. We gotta do a VIN inspection. So I go in there, and they like did a VIN inspection on us. Like, see you later. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> After what I just went through. Yeah. So you. Just I've driven 500 it. miles. Yeah, like we added to my trip. Got hooked up with a, a guy to help you through. Yeah, it, the right? broker. And then you you did some stuff with him We've recently. Done, we just shipped a skid steer to so Canada using the same broker that Bruce used. It's literally with. all about knowing the right people because these huge brokerage companies want to like take four days. They want to make you a customer. Do all this. We. This this guy, I, like, called around, and they said, oh, call this guy, call this, like, buddy kind of thing. I ended up calling a semi-dealership in Canada that ships to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And, like, call this guy. So I called him, and, like, an hour I had everything I needed. Hmm. And it was just, like, 
it was like almost too easy at that point. I wonder which way is harder to get things into Canada or get things out of Canada. I think it's going into Canada. They're okay as long as you're paying all these taxes and fees. You know, yeah. they're very Canada's yeah, emission tax heavy. Like importing things a little bit more lax. So mm. there's Scania's. There's a lot of other European vehicles in Canada because they have a 15 year old, not a 25 year old. Oh, uh, okay. What's that? How much time we at? No, you're good. We over good. Okay. No. Yeah, plenty of time. So, My buddy was just. My buddy was just doing this in Canada where he went to film an event. Mm. So he's making money. Yeah. Uh, and he had oh, to you get your taxes. Yeah. He had to um, give a deposit of the exact amount of camera gear that he had in cash to Canada so that they knew he wasn't selling it there to make money. So he had to leave Canada with a They're deposit picky. of like tens of thousands of dollars. And I was like, man, that's like insane. Like, you're like, if you're a small company that has just like a bunch of camera gear, you can't swing. Yeah, that. yeah. Some of these camera guys too are like a cash poor, but they have a lot of expensive cameras, don't exactly. they? Exactly. Like their even, whole life. Like a lot of people are like that with a lot of businesses. I'm like, yeah. how do you manage to just have the equivalent value of all of your belongings in cash? I'm assuming you could probably like you could kind of a brokerage they, or something they, might would help, but yeah, that's not doesn't make it easy at all. Well, most but when guys you're going to make know. money there with it, yeah. is the problem. But yeah. how do you, how does the border patrol know a twenty thousand dollar camera from a two thousand dollar camera though? You know? Well, when I pulled, that's another thing. Like when I pulled through the border at the first time, and the guy's like, well, "What year is this?" I'm like, "A ninety seven. He's like, "No, it's not." I'm like, "Yeah, it is." It says right here on the title and paperwork I've got here. He's like, "This thing looks way too nice to be a 97. I'm like, "Dude, it's just didn't buy it." <laughs> well, like an American nineteen ninety seven yeah. truck is roached usually, and it just is this weird looking vehicle to begin yeah, with. Yeah, they have no idea what it is. If They're he like, sees like. This? Did you also blow through the ag stop when you come into Florida? Always. Every time. Yeah. Every time. That's another thing about no getting content. <laughs> I don't stop at any weight stations. I mean, I'm never overweight. Yeah. But, like, I purposely don't stop just striving for content. Yeah, pin the table. Just striving for content because if we get a take a weight ticket, for me, I'm not for hire, so I don't have a yeah. motor vehicle record. So if I get a ticket, you just pay it. It doesn't go on your license. It's just a weight ticket. Well, you're also always pulling whatever you're pulling with a way too big of a truck. You know, so you're pulling a motorhome with a semi truck or a fifth wheel with yeah. a semi truck. But so the ag stops whatever. in Florida, yeah, everybody knows to just drive through them. You see somebody stopping at the ag stop, you're like, what are you I've doing? gotten pulled over before, and they're like, you missed the ag stop. I'm like, yeah, and? Like, come on, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I ain't got no like, vegetables. It's midnight, man. What do you think? <laughs> I've pulled through maybe twice at an ag stop ever, and they just like, but they didn't give me time to stop. Hide there. the corn, <laughs> hide the beans. <laughs> it's all put them in the dual boxes. Yeah, yeah. And there's even like, I guess all of the into Florida they have ag stops, but then they're like pretty far into Florida, and you you can miss them pretty easily. Yeah, uh, yeah. The know. wait stations and all that. But now like wait stations, you don't even have to pull in anymore. So like if you're in the far right lane, traveling almost, it's getting to it's tra- going all over the country now. There's scales built into the highway. Mm-hmm. So and you bump over it, it weighs you. And if it's, like, close to being overweight, they'll tell you to pull in and they'll do an accurate yeah. weight. They just know right away. Yeah, they direct you in, don't they? But yeah. some of them have a safe pass. Like, some of the trucking companies, have I think, pre-pass. have a pre-pass. Yeah. Hmm. So, but, yeah, it's above our pay. 